Peace and Shalom Israel. Before we start the lesson, hit the notification button because we upload lessons every week and I don't want you to miss a single one of them. Like, comment, subscribe, and if there's a topic you would like for us to cover, we'll see what we can do. So until next time, cue the music. to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everyone joining us on this program. This is the Fountain of Israel's Bible Studies Program. And as always, it's an honor for me to stand before you on the Lord's Holy Sabbath Day. But today, it is not just a regular Sabbath. This lesson is a high Sabbath or an annual Sabbath or a feast day. Depends on how you look at it, right? <clears throat> it's going to be the Feast of Trumpets. We're going to talk about the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. And we're going to go into the Bible to get an understanding of what, what it means um, to memorialize the Feast of Trumpets. What, what, what does all this mean? What about all these feasts? Okay, so this is one of the seven or so feasts that are outlined in the Bible and obviously they are found over in Leviticus 23 which we will go over there soon but to start <clears throat> we are going to begin in the New Testament and we're going to start over at Colossians and then we'll go to Leviticus 23 as we normally do so we're going to go to Colossians chapter 2 and we have a lot of ground to cover and one of the things that I want us to understand is that when it comes to trumpets, it means a couple of things, but I'm just going to point out like three things, right? So, trumpets is to proclaim something, to put out a warning, and to announce the coming, to announce the coming of the king, to announce royalty is coming. You've all seen various movies that are, you know, period piece, and they may be in like a Renaissance festival or any country that still has like a you know a monarchy or something when royalty is approaching they blow trumpets so the same thing is true of our king our king is coming and the blowing of the trumpet announces that you've heard me said in lessons past where it says you know the messiah is coming in <clears throat> in the year of pentecost on the day of atonement at the last trump and so that's, that, that's what we believe because we know all these feast days, they go together. Now, some people may be saying, well, you know, brother, you know, nobody knows the time of the hour. I didn't give you the time of the hour. I didn't give you the time of the exact hour. I gave you the season. I gave you the season. So that's when he's going to come because he operates according to his plan. And according to his plan, he operates during uh, these feast days. He operates according to these feast days because they all symbolize and point to something. And so as far as these feast days are concerned, we memorialize this. We should be teaching this to our, te our children. We should be practicing this ourselves. These are the things that we should be doing. We want to understand why we're doing what we're doing. So this lesson is the Feast of Trumpets. <clears throat> So let's go over in Colossians 2, and let's start out at verse 14. Colossians 2, I mean 11, 2 and 11, and we'll go to 14 and skip. Verse 11, it says, In whom also you are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in putting off the body of sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, has he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. Now, of course, we know that the transgressions and the blotting out, we can go in other places where he's blotting out your sins. He didn't blot out the law. The law is not against you. The law is your teacher. 
the law teaches us what to do and what not to do. But he blotted out our sins. And we can go into the Old Testament and see that. But let's jump to 16. And 16 says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a holy day, which this is one, or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Okay, plural, Sabbath days. But why did he say that? In 17 he said, Which are shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ or and the body is of Christ. So it's not making an exception. It said we're doing all these things, the holy days, the new moons, the Sabbaths, all that. They are a shadow of things to come, which is why we memorialize these things. Oh, brother, we can't do that right because, you know, we're not in you know, Jerusalem. And I understand that. I get that. That's why it's a memorial. That's why it's a memorial. So wherever we are, wherever we are scattered, and we're proclaiming, you know, Lord, I belong to you. I want to be a part of your plan. I want to be signed up for your program. Are you a saint of the Most High? Then we all have to act like it. So let's memorialize this thing. And let's take a look at it over in Leviticus 23. Leviticus 23 and then we're going to focus in on some of these trumpets right we're going to go to various places throughout the bible and look at some of these trumpets leviticus 23 and i must begin at verse 1 and then we'll skip around a little bit verse 1 it says speak unto the children of israel and say unto them concerning the feast of the lord which ye shall proclaim to be a holy convocation which is a gathering even these are my feasts he said these are my feasts oh that's for the jews no they're for the lord that's why you're doing them Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. So we begin with the weekly Sabbath. A holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So there's your, your regular work, right? The, the work that you've been doing all week for the six days, you don't do it for the seventh day. These are the feasts of the Lord's even holy con convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. When it is time, Moadim, Greek, appointed times. Okay, these are Moadims. All right, Moadims, drop down to verse 23. Let's look at what 23 says. And it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial, a blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. So a holy gathering. We're going to have a memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. Right there, it's a memorial. Oh, we can't... Uh, right there it's a memorial and they were not in jerusalem okay so relax 25 you shall do no serve our work so work for money but you can work to get to, to prepare the feast to worship the lord you can do that so you shall do no serve our work but you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the lord so there's go that you can't strike fire yeah you can on these days you can start a fire okay so I hope we have an understanding on that. So now we're going to keep dealing with trumpets and we're going to look at a couple things. OK, I just want one. Uh, I just want one. Uh, one passage over Psalm 81 and verse three. Psalm 81 and verse three. Psalm 81 verse three reads this way. It says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed. Moadim, okay? On our solemn feast day, this is what we are doing. Because in the seventh month, the first day of the seventh month, that is the memorial of the trumpet, and the new moon marks a new month, and that's how trumpet starts, right? So blow up the trumpet in the new moon. So there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there on their own homesteads. Anytime there's a new moon, they'll go out there and they'll blow a shofar. Trumpet, shofar, same thing, right? So blow up the trumpet in the new moon in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. So let's keep that in mind, brothers and sisters. Now, we're going to go ahead to Exodus 19 before they got to Exodus 20 and the, and, and the Ten Commandments and all that, right? So before we get there, we're going to go to Exodus 19. And I want to start over in verse 10. And we'll stop at 22. Exodus 19, verse 10. It reads this way. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them uh, to them day and tomorrow. 
today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes so clean yourselves up and be ready against the third day so on the third day be ready for the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai and thou shall set bounds unto the people round about saying take heed to yourselves that you go not up into the mount or touch the border of it whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death so you will die you got to go this far and no further right there shall not and hand touch it but he shall surely be stoned or shot through whether it be a beast or man it shall not live when the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount. When the trumpet sounded long, they shall come up to the mount. So there's a proclamation, a warning, or royalty is coming. Okay, there's other ones, but I'm focusing on those three things as far as symbolism of the trumpets. It's an announcement or something. 14, and Moses went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, be ready against the third day, come not at your wives. So abstain. And it came and it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the trumpets exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. They were very, very afraid. 17. And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God and they stood at the uh, at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was all together on a smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. <clears throat> 19. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake, and God answered him by voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai and the top of the mount, and the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down charge the people lest they break through unto the Lord to gaze and many of them perish and let the priests which come near to the Lord sanctify themselves lest the Lord break forth upon them so this was a uh, an announcement something is about to happen right something was about to happen things are about to take place about to transpire so let's look at um, right after um, he delivers the these ten commandments go to exodus 20 and 18 just go up one chapter 20 and 18 okay and this is pretty much right after the the commandments right so it said and all the people saw the thundering and the lightning and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking and when the people saw it they removed and stood afar off i mean they ran and stood afar off okay this is an announcement the king's coming the kingdom's coming it's a proclamation Something is about to happen. Something's about to go down. It's a warning. Let's go back to the New Testament. Okay? Because first of all, our Messiah, he, he, he left. And he's supposed to come back. So let's take a look real quick. John 14. Go with me to John 14. And I just want the first three verses. John 14, first three verses. Which read let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions and if it were not so I would have told you I go to prepare a place for you and if I go and prepare a place for you I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am there ye may be also so we got to pay attention to that like where i am you're going to be you're going to be where i am right so we're going to get into that we're going to get into that a little bit but we do want to look at his ascension real quick right so let's look at his ascension okay so he's going to leave and then he's supposed to come back so let's look at his ascension we're just going to go with what the bible says okay we don't we don't need all the fancy stories that people like to tell just to make it sound good let's just go with what it says acts chapter one Acts chapter 1, I'm going to start at verse 6, jump around a little bit, and I'll let you know. And verse 6, it starts, it says, When they, therefore, were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? Now, look at what they're thinking. They're not thinking, oh, will you take us to heaven? No, he shows back up, you know, after his resurrection. He shows back up. First thing is, okay, now, will you restore the kingdom to Israel? We don't pay attention to their mindset. Okay, 
They're not talking about, oh, well, you know, hey, are you going to take us, whisk us off to heaven? No, no, no. Verse 7, he says, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father had put in his own power. So I can't tell you that. Our job, just be ready. Verse 9, and when he spoke these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Okay, he was taken up. They saw him. They, they saw him see, uh, leave, right? And while they stood steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Okay, these are angels. Verse 11, which also said, ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go to heaven. The same way you seen him go to heaven is the same way he's going to come back. Meaning they saw him, right? So the same way you see him, the same way he's leaving, the same way he's coming back. And then what? Let's see. Where did they leave? 12. They return, they then return they unto Jerusalem from the Mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. Okay? So look where he left. Jerusalem, Mount Olivet, or the Mount of Olives, right? That's where he left. Where is he coming back? He's coming back, right? He's coming back. So we got we to gotta get an understanding of that. And let's just go with what the scripture says. Zechariah 14. That kind of gives us a little bit of insight as well. Let's go to Zechariah 14, right? In verse 1. Zechariah 14, 1 reads this way. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh. What? We're talking about trumpets. The day of the Lord cometh. And thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. So we know this is not a happy trip. He's coming to move some furniture. There's going to be some problems. There's going to be some smoke in the city. I tell you that much. And the city shall be taken. Hmm. And the houses rifled. And the women ravaged. And half of the city shall be uh, shall go forth into captivity and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city then shall the lord go forth and fight against those nations and when he fought as as when he fought in a day of battle hmm now verse 4 tells us where he's going to be and his feet shall stand in that day upon the mount of olives what we were just Wait a minute, we've just talked about the new... Did he just left the mount? He ascended up in the mount of... Okay, so when he comes back, his feet are going to touch the Mount of Olives. So, therefore, this is called a clue, people. That way, you don't get fooled by the Antichrist. By the false Messiah. Okay? Which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof towards the east and towards the west. Wait, 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 wait. When you when they giving you exact geographical locations, then you can't write this off as a metaphor. They're giving you details. You can't just write, well, you know, it just simply means, you know, in spirit, you know, he's just gonna be in the spiritual. No, they're giving you exact geographical locations where he's going to be. The day of the Lord's coming. Okay, and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east, and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof uh, toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley, and half the mount shall remove towards the north and half of it towards the south. Are we starting to get a picture? Are we starting to get some understanding? Hmm, and Acts, Mount of Olives. Zechariah, Mount of Olives. Matthew 24, let's go there right now. Matthew 24, we're going to jump around 24 a little bit because we know that kicked off in, in about 70 AD. But this whole thing is beginning to unfold because there are some things that, that, that happened in Matthew 24 that haven't happened just yet, right? But some things did happen, okay? Jerusalem getting trampled under and all that, that happened, all right? So we got to understand it. We know it's, it's unfolding, right? So Matthew 24, let's go at verse 3. We're going to jump around, but I'll let you know where I am. Verse 3 says this. And as he sat upon the what? Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately saying, tell us. He, they asked three questions, guys. When shall these things be? One. And what shall be the sign of thy coming? Two. And the end of the world? Three. Okay. I hope, I hope, we, get, I hope we get an understanding there. Let me jump around just a little bit. 32. Go to verse 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender 
and put it forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Okay? So all these things will be fulfilled. Okay? The generation that he's referring to, of course, that was 32, 34, but I'm going to drop back. Okay? Show you he's going to give you a couple of signs, right? A couple of things that are going to happen. Okay? Which is uh, verse 11, Matthew 24, go to verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. We got a whole lot of that. Verse 12. And because iniquity shall abound, shall grow, shall be everywhere. Nothing but sin. Because, you know, a lot of false prophets tell you what? You don't got to keep the law. You got Which proliferates sin. You tell people they don't got to keep the law, then what? they're going to do whatever the hell they want. Right? Okay. So, because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold. And they're not, they're not just talking about touchy-feely love, okay? They're not talking about that. They're talking about the actual love, okay? Love thy neighbor as thyself, love God, which are bound up in those two statements, which is all the commandments, really. 21. Let's go to verse 21 in Matthew 24. Verse 21 says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since, the beginning of the world to this time no nor ever shall be so it's gonna get bad really bad if we thought 70 AD and them ransacking Jerusalem was, was bad because see they thought it was bad in the Maccabean period okay when the Greeks took over the temple and we you know and they, they're killing people for observing the Sabbath trying to shove you know, swine's flesh down people's throat and stuff. You thought that was bad, and then Judas Maccabees had to take it back. But then 70 AD, whoo, with the Romans, that, that was even worse. They they surrounded them and trapped them in and, 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 and starved them. That's why when the Messiah gave them a warning and said, hey, look, when you see Jerusalem surrounded about by armies, you, you, you better get, don't even go back to your house. You better head for the mountains. Get out. It's that bad. Let's go to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11. It's really bad, brothers and sisters. So Daniel 11. I'm going to start at 31. I'm going to get 31. It said, and an arm shall stand on his parts. Okay, so like an army. And they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength. And shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Okay? So you look at what happened. You, you see what happened. Similar thing. It, it happened in the Maccabean period. With the Greeks slaughtering pigs and stuff on an altar and just ransacking, which is why uh, you had the Maccabean revolt. You, you got it in, in 70 AD when the Romans uh, came in, ransacked Jerusalem again. Okay? And guess what? Both cases could not sacrifice. And to this day, we don't sacrifice. Okay, not Israel, not us. Okay, and it said, and they shall place the abomination that make it desolate. Okay, and go to uh, 36. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods, and shall prosper to the indignation be accomplished. For that that is determined shall be done. Okay, so all these things are going to happen. Oh, it's going to get bad. It's going to get bad, and we have to understand that. It got bad before. I told you a couple of periods where it got bad. It's still it's going to happen again. Because all of it has to be complete. All of this wretchedness has to be complete. That means most High let things play out. He, he'll, he'll let it play out because he knows what he's going to do in the end. He let it play out. Go to Daniel 12. Go to Daniel chapter 12. I'm going to start at 1. Go to Daniel 12. 1 reads this way. And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, which standeth for the children of thy people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered. Everyone that shall be found written in the book. You want to be in the book. You want to be in the book. Here's why. Verse 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life first resurrection, and some to everlasting shame and everlasting contempt, second resurrection. 
So even in the Old Testament, it talks about it. Because this happens when he comes. I mean, second resurrection happens later, but when he shows up, people awaken. I'm dropping a verse six. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the rivers, how long shall it be to the end of these wonders? And I heard the man uh, clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for time, times, and half a times, three and a half years, time one year, times two years, and a half a time, a half a year. And when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. So we're already scattered, right? So a few more things have to have to spread, have, have to occur. Because we can't say the Maccabean period because, yeah, they were scattered a little bit and then they took back the temple. All the way up till you get to the New Testament when Rome is taken over and occupying Jerusalem. But Israel was still there. I mean, there were, there were some scattered tribes, of course, but still Israel dwelled in Jerusalem, at least Judah, some Levi and Benjamites, at least. OK, southern tribes still there, at least. OK, and then when you get to 70 AD, that's when they got kicked out for the last and final time. And we have not been back since. So let's go ahead and look at we're going to put Second Thessalonians right on the heels of Daniel so we can put this thing together. Second Thessalonians chapter two, if you will. And I'm going to read the first four verses. Verse one reads, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not so soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. So it is coming. But he said, don't don't look, calm down. All right. Certain things have to occur. It says, verse three, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. So that's got to happen first. And that man of sin be revealed who he's talking about, the son of perdition. OK who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God, and that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So when that happens, when they build this third temple and, 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 and some dude come over there and set up shop and be like, hmm, I like that. I like that. Now, there's theories out there. A guy out of nowhere, some guy out of Russia somewhere is supposed to go over there. Then they say, hey, some people say there's a pope. All I know is this. When someone goes over there and want to set up shop in Jerusalem and take over and all that and exalt themselves, you, you, need, you need to worry. <laughs> you need to worry at that time. When he gives us clues and gives us a sign, that's when you need to worry. All right? So let's do this. Over in Numbers 31, a proclamation, a warning. So we're going to look at this a little bit more. We're going to look at these trumpets a little bit more. Okay. Numbers 31, we're going to read the first seven verses. Look, look at this. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterwards shall thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go to battle the Midianites, and, and, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Okay? So, like, hey, remember, to everything there's a season. I know when we were trapped in Christianity and nonviolent, nonviolent, and, you know, turn the other cheek and all that, well, you know, hey, our God's a man of war, right? So he, he, he teaches us these things. He said, arm yourself, right? And Moses, in verse 3, And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm yourself... Arm some of yourselves unto the war and let them go against the, Midian, the Midianites and avenge the Lord of Midian. Of every tribe, a thousand throughout all the tribes of Israel shall ye send to war. So 12,000 people, right? So there were delivered out of the thousands of Israel, a thousand of every tribe, 12,000 armed for war. And Moses 
sent them to war, a thousand of every tribe, them and Phineas, the son of Eleazar, the priest, to war with the holy instruments and the trumpets to blow in his hand. See, you like, okay, when you go to war, why do you need a trumpet? What's it? Okay, because it's a signal. It's a call. It's a warning. It's a proclamation. It's about to go down, as it were. Verse 7, And they warred against the Midianites, and the Lord commanded Moses, and they slew all the males. So they won that one. Okay, so that's that's how you do it. There, like I said, there's other meanings there too. We don't have time to get into every meaning, right? We're gonna get enough to get an understanding why we are memorializing what we're memorializing and what this feast day means. We're gonna let the Bible tell us what it means. Joshua chapter six. Joshua chapter six. We're gonna be in Joshua for a little bit. Okay, symbolizing something else. Joshua chapter 6. Let's, let, let's look at it. Joshua 6, we're going to start at 1. Now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. And ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thus thou shalt do six days. So he's telling you exactly what to do, right? And he said, seven priests shall bear before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horns, shofar, ram's horns. And the seventh day you shall compass the city seven times. So for six days, you're going to circle the city one time. On the seventh day, seven priests will circle the city seven times with, ram with trumpets, basically, okay? Ram's horns. And... The seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Okay, so ram horns, trumpets, same thing. Okay, and it came to pass that when they make a long blast with the ram's horns, trumpets, ram horns, same thing, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. Are we getting some understanding? And, a, and Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said unto them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And the people said unto the, and he said unto the people, Pass on and compass the city and let him that is armed pass on before the Ark of the Lord. And it came to pass when Joshua had spoken unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horn passed on before the Lord and blew with trumpets the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord followed them. Okay, I'm going to drop down. That's verse 8, but I'm going to drop down to 12. And verse 12 says, And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the Ark of the Lord. And the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew with the trumpets and the armed men went before them. But the reward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests going on and blowing with trumpets. Now let's drop to 15. And it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day. So that's super early and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priests blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. So they made a, hey, it's a proclamation now. It's, a, it's official now. We got this. This is what the Lord wants us to do. Hey, you got the city. You guys, we are taking this city. Go to verse Go to verse 20. Verse 20, it says, So the people shouted when the priests blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and took the city. It's an announcement. It's a warning. It's a proclamation. Something is about to happen. That's what it means. Something is about to happen. Sound the alarm. Blow the trumpets. Sound the shofar. 
That's what it means, my friend. We're going to continue on. Psalm 97. Psalm 97. Because this, this is some of the things that, uh, you know, the Most High want us to, you know, keep in mind as we keep going through this. Okay? We're going to get a little bit deeper into, a little bit deeper, but right before we do, let me segue over here and then we'll get a little bit deeper. Psalm 97, I want the first 10 verses. Psalm 97, which read, The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire go forth before him and burn it up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlighten the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. The heavens declare his righteousness and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images. That boast themselves of idols. Worship him all ye gods. So everyone who's running around serving these false gods. Serving the wrong God, doing their own thing, serving angels or serving the God of their mind. They're going to be confounded. So it's just like Joshua said, whom do you serve? Because none of these feast days matters if you don't serve the right God. None of this matters if you don't know whom it is you serve. So what's it going to be in your house? What's it going to be? Who are you going to serve? Because none of this stuff even matters. See, in the household, we can't have this cafeteria plan. On your homesteads and all. You can't have this cafeteria plan. Everybody just does their own little thing. You can't have that. We got to get this in order. We got to get this straight. You better get this figured out. Because Yah is not the author of confusion. So we got to be marching to the same ram's horn. We need to be doing the same thing. Whom do you serve? Because those who serve uh, graven images, false gods, they will be confounded, not knowing what's going on. Having no idea. Verse 8. Zion heard and was glad and the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgments, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted above, far above all gods, little gods. Okay? Yea, that love the Lord hate evil. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. He preserveth the souls of his saints. He delivered them out of the hands of the wicked. Okay? That's for us. That's for us. So now... We're going to continue our journey into these trumpets real quick, right? So we're going to go ahead and continue our journey. Okay, so we're going to look at this. Uh, Isaiah 27. Isaiah 27. And I just want two verses here. 12 and 13. Isaiah 27, 12 and 13 reads this way. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall beat off from the channel of the river unto the stream of Egypt. See, a lot of things are going to be happening when he comes back. And ye shall be gathered one by one, O ye children of Israel. And it shall come to pass in that day that the great trumpet shall be blown, and they shall come which were ready to perish in the land of Assyria and the outcasts in the land of Egypt, and shall worship the Lord in the holy mount at Jerusalem. Again, we're back at Jerusalem again. So now we have an idea where he's going to go. And look at where he's leading people. Remember, uh, you know, he's going to lead people, you know, in the wilderness once again, like an eagle's wing, comforting the church and the saints, people who are trying to escape, trying to get out of the way for the battle of Armageddon. Hmm. Revelation chapter 8. Revelation chapter 8. Let's look at this. We're talking about trumpets, people. Revelation chapter 8. I'm going to start at verse 1, which reads this way. He said, And when he had opened the seventh seal, okay, seventh seal, there was a silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. 
And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given what? Seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense. Okay? And he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And I'm going to drop to verse 6. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Because this is an announcement, right? Verse 7. The first angel sounded, and there followed hell and fire mingled with blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of the trees were burnt up, and all the grass was burnt up. Things are starting to happen, brothers and sisters. They're about to happen, right? But we're gonna we're gonna drop down a little bit, right? We're gonna drop down. Go to Revelation. Let's go to chapter nine, okay? Revelation chapter nine, and verse one reads this way: "And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, unto the where? To the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. Okay, so we know who that is." Okay, we know Satan is about to take the stage. So verse 11, Revelation 9, 11, it says, And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has his name Apollyon. So Satan is about to take stage, right? And he does this at the fifth trumpet, okay? Because we know our Messiah is coming at the wind, the last trumpet. And we also know how many trumpets are there? Seven. Seven angels, seven trumpets, the fifth trumpet. This is when Satan's about to take stage, right? This is when he touched down on earth. Okay? Revelation chapter 10. Go with me to Revelation chapter 10. Now, just want verse 7. Let's look at this mystery, okay? 10 and 7, it says, But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound the seventh trumpet, look at what's going to happen, guys, the seventh trumpet, the mystery of God should be finished as he has declared to his servants, the prophets. Now watch this, guys. He said this is going to happen at the seventh trumpet. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. Let's look at this mystery. We, we got to look at this mystery. Like, wait, wait a minute. What is that? What, what, what is this mystery? What's going on? So go be to 1 Corinthians 15. So let's look at this mystery. We're talking about uh, a seven trump and we're talking about a mystery. So where else in the Bible talks about a trumpet and a mystery? 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go to uh, verse 50. Go with me to 50. And he says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption, meaning something that can die won't inherit me to get it and keep it forever, right? Because eventually you got to be immortal or incorruptible. And he says what? Behold, I show you a mystery. Ah, oh, we're back at that mystery again. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Oh, that's the mystery. And when's it going to happen? In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Hello? We got, so we got a little agreement here. We got a little harmony in the scriptures. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall, shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. We shall be changed. So Paul and John is talking about the same thing. Interesting. So go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's get a little bit more of that. Let's get some more of that. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, and let's begin at verse 13. And 13 reads this way. But I would not have you be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have already died, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. We will not go before them. But what's going to happen in 16? For the Lord himself shall descend, come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of God. Which trump? The last trump. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Are you with me? And so shall we 
we ever be with the Lord. We know where he's going when he gets here. We already know where he's heading. We know his destination. We got that much. So, let's take a look, guys. Let's take a look. Matthew 24. Matthew 24. And we're going to go to verse 29. Matthew 24, verse 29. Let's read this. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, a lot of people, they say, Oh, rapture and this and that. Okay, first of all, there's no rapture. Second of all, it says immediately after tribulation. So even if there was a rapture, it happens after the tribulation anyway. So you still got to go through something. Okay? You still got to go through something. But we got a whole lesson on that. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. When's, it gonna, when's that going to happen? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other, from all over the world. He's going to gather his elect. Do you hear what I'm saying? Are you hearing what the scripture is trying to say to us? I hope you guys are uh, getting this. So let's get a little bit more. Go back to Revelation. Let's go back to Revelation. Chapter 11. Revelation chapter 11. We're going to deal with these trumpets. We're going to see what the Bible says about this. In verse 15. Revelation 11 and 15. Which reads, And the seventh angel sounded. Seven, right? Doesn't say eight, nine, fifteen, thirty-eight. Well, it doesn't say that. And the seventh angel sounded. And there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And he shall reign forever and and ever the kingdom of this world and of our Lord what's the word where's it gonna be okay and the four and twenty four elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshiped God saying we give thee thanks O Lord God Almighty which art and was and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and has reigned and the angries were and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and should destroy them which destroy the earth. Okay, so you better pick what side you're going to be on, because it's going to be the time of the dead when it's, it's time for them to be judged. But he's going to preserve his saints. See, his saints have nothing to worry about. If you're one of his, you got zero to worry about, brothers and sisters. So you don't have to panic. You don't have to worry about it. It's good. But if you're on a fence, you're not sure, you haven't made your determination, there is no fence riding in this thing. You have to decide what you're going to do. He said he hates someone who's lukewarm. He said, I'd rather you be hot or cold. Lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. Make your decision. Because once that trumpet is blown, it's too late. Judgment has already been determined once that trumpet is blown. I'd rather you hot or cold. You figure it out. Let's go to Revelation 19. Let's get a little bit more here. Revelation 19. Revelation 19, I'm going to pick that up at verse 11. Okay? Because he said his wrath has come and, you know, things are about to happen. Let's look at this. And I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse. And he says, he that sat upon it was called faithful and true. This is the Messiah, faithful and true. And in righteousness, you know, only the Messiah deals in righteousness. He does judge and make war. So he's coming back pretty upset. His eyes were a flame of fire. And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. You know, the true name that everyone's fighting about, right? And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, because he was in war. 
and his name is called the Word of God. So we know exactly who we're talking about. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. So they're all righteous, okay? No sinners there. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it it should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with what? A rod of iron. That means his way or the highway. And he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty. Treaded the winepress is war. A lot of people died. A whole lot of blood. Okay. And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. At least that whatever that name was, that's what it means. King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great king. Because it's going to be a great war, and the animals, the fowls of the air, the beasts, they're going to uh, be on the cleanup crew right there. They that eat the flesh of kings, hello, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. So he's going to be, you know, you know how you cook food and you, some people, you know, the grandmother, they, they have you clean up while you cook at the same time. That's what the Lord's going to be doing. So while he's killing up a lot of people, those who are not his, not his saints, those who are not his, the animals on the cleanup crew at the same time is going on. Okay. Because they're talking about blood is going to be running up to the horse's bridle. It's going to be pretty bad. So I am just urging you to pick a side. Okay. And all those that sit on me, 19, and I saw the beasts and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was taken and with him, the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast. So we definitely should stay away from the mark of the beast. And then that worship his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone are we starting to kind of get an idea of what's going on here you see so we're going to go to revelation i want to look uh, i want to get one verse real quick i think i know where it is but before i go there let me go ahead and take a quick look around Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna go there just a second. I have that ready. All right, so I have that ready. Now, let's go back where I was, go to Revelation 16. Let's go to Revelation 16, okay? So after, so after these uh, trumpets, Thank you for holding there for me, uh, for with me for a second. So after these trumpets, then we know we got vials or bowls of judgments, right? That comes after the trumpets, right? Because this is what comes after. In Revelation 16, I'm gonna start at verse one, okay? And I heard a voice out of the, I heard a voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, "Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth." So then things get worse, okay? Brother, pour out the vials of the wrath of God on earth. And then look what happened. And they happened in succession, right? Watch this. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and gruesome sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast. And upon them which worshipped his image. That's going to be bad. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea. And it, and it became as the blood of dead men. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his uh, vial upon the rivers and the fountains of waters, and they became blood. Okay, so you won't be able to escape. You won't even. You won't be able to escape the Most High if you're not one of His. You won't be able to eat, drink. You won't be able to do anything. Nature itself is going to turn against you. I mean, you know, the sinners, those who are not His, the wicked. Nature is going to turn against the very wicked. So there'll be no escape. And to, and to some point, they're going to be praying to die. They won't even be able to die. Oh, you're going to take this, uh, this suffering. I'll let you die when I say you can die. 
And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and the fountains of water, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the water say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and was and shall be, because thou hast judged thus, because you made a judgment like this. You are right. You are in the right. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets. Have they not shed the blood of saints and prophets? Have they not? And thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. I mean, they deserve it. Okay? They deserve it. And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. So they still agree with his judgments that he's making. They still agree with it. And then the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and the power and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. So the sun will be burning people. Have you ever lived in Arizona for a while? And when men were scorched with great heat, and when men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, because when people get all upset, they start to blaspheme and curse out God, right? When they're all upset, which has power over these plagues, because of what's happening, they're, they're called plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. So they still did not repent and give him glory. Nope, they still. So how could they not, how could they not deserve it? They're worthy all the, even when this was happening, they still didn't repent. Still didn't say, oh, no, I, I, I'm going to serve the God. No, they're like, no, I curse God. How could God do this? All right, all right, all that. So even after all that, before any of you guys think you're so smart, so great, or whatever, and think that, oh, man, the Lord, he's a little too harsh. They still didn't repent. They still were doing what all the wickedness that they were doing. They were still doing it. So it don't matter. That's why I say you got to make your let you got. Hey, look, what does not revelation say, you know, let the wicked be wicked. Still, let the righteous be righteous. Still, that's it. No lukewarm. You decide. It said and men. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Verse 10, and the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, and repented not of their deeds. They still kept doing what they wanted to do. They kept doing wickedness. So what'd you expect? So he kept turning up the heat on them. Of course he did. Verse 12, and the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the waters there was dried up. Nope, no drink for you that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared because we're getting ready for war. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophets. Okay, so they gave orders, right? Wicked orders. That they, uh, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. So we know what's about to happen. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest ye walk naked and they see his shame. That's verse 15. Brothers and sisters, that's why you got to be ready. That's why he's talking about you got to watch, be ready, walk in order, keep doing this thing, keep going. Keep going. Hold your garments. The five virgins, five foolish, five wise. Be ready. <sighs> 16. And he gathered them together into a place in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air. And there came a great voice of the trumpet of heaven from the throne saying, it is done. And there were voices and thunders and lightning. Sound like Exodus, right? Voices and thunders and lightning. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the city of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hell out of heaven. Every excuse me, every stone about the weight of a talent and men blaspheme God again because of the plague of the hell and for the plague thereof was exceeding great. They still blaspheme God. So now people are probably wondering like, man, you know, okay, so, but how do we observe this, this, this memorial? How do we observe it? So we're going to go to Deuteronomy 14, right? And I'm going to start, I believe, at about 24, Deuteronomy 14. 
So how do we do? How do we observe these feast days? How do we do that? So let's go Deuteronomy 14, and I'm gonna go about. Let's see. I'm going to go, okay, 20, I'm going to start at 22 and I'm going to go down to about 26, right? This is how we observe it, right? This is how we do this when we come together. Deuteronomy 14, start about 22, which reads, Thou shalt truly tithe all the increase of thy seed, that the field bring it forth year by year. So we're going to tithe, okay? Right now we do a potluck and stuff like that, which is fine. We're going to tithe that. And thou shalt eat before the Lord thy God. We are going to rejoice. We're going to feast. We're going to eat before the Lord thy God in the place which he hath choose to place his name there. The tithe of the corn, of thy wine, of thine oil, and the firstlings of thy herd, so there's your meat, and of thy flocks, there you go, that thou mayest learn to fear the Lord uh, thy God always. Learn to fear him, respect him, honor him. That's why we do a lesson. That's why we got to talk about this. That's why we talk about the feast day. What does it mean? What is it pointing us to? Okay? While we're doing it, we got to memorialize it, right? And then 24, now watch this, because now you guys are traveling, right? Now you're traveling, you're going to go to another brother's land or something like that, or go to a community. It says, and if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, because what you're supposed to be carrying, you're supposed to carry the tithe of thy increase, okay, from the field. You're supposed to be tithing your corn and your wine and your oil and the firstlings of your herds and your flock and stuff like that. So if you can't transport that, then you go to 24. And if the way be too long for thee, so that thou art not able to carry it, or if the place be too far from thee, which the Lord thy God shall choose to set his name there, when the Lord thy God has blessed thee, what he's going to say in 25, then thou turn it into money, and bind up the money in thy hand, and shall go unto the place which the Lord thy God shall choose, and shall, shall bestow that money, or buy, right? For whatever thy soul lusted after, for example, for oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, yes, you can have wine, or for strong drink, that is not Gatorade, or for whatever thy soul desireth, okay? And thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy God, and shall rejoice thou and thine household shall rejoice it's a party it's a celebration it's a make a big deal out of this because it means you are on the same page with the most high you are observing or memorializing his feast days and it's a feast day because you actually feast of course not the day of atonement but we'll get to that See, out in the world, we made a big deal out of these other uh, out of these other man-made holidays all these pagan holidays we made a big deal but he gave us holy days so we can make a big deal. And a lot of people are like, well, I, don't, I ain't gonna do nothing. I'm just, you know, I just, you know, I'm gonna sleep all day. Just take me a good long nap. That's, that's, that's all I'm gonna do. We went from one extreme to another. We went from doing the most to doing the absolute least for the most high. We go to the professional games, well, not during this pandemic, but we go to these professional games and scream our lungs out and celebrate and hoot and holler and all that, but then for the most high, well, wake up, Jacob. We have got to do better. We've got to do better. You think you, think you didn't notice? You, you, you think you didn't notice? He didn't notice all the hooting and hollering. He didn't notice how your heart felt with all this. Now, I know a lot of us, we, we look at, you know, some of these other pagan holidays. Oh, well, I never did like Christmas. And all. I understand that. But when you have all this, uh, th th this, this, this rejoicing in your heart, he, he knew it was there. Why can't you have the same thing for something he told you to do? He said you're going to rejoice before him. He said you're going to do that. That you're going to eat and you're going to, let me look at rejoice. You and your household. Hebrew 80, 55, some mock, right? To rejoice, to be glad, to rejoice, to exalt. Cause to rejoice, gladden, make glad. Make glad, blight or gleesome, being very glee. Cheer up, to make glad, merry, merriment. But everyone wants to be all holy and pious and don't want to do anything. We can do better. 
we can do better. This has been the memorial of the blowing of the trumpets. I hope someone has been edified. So until next time, search the scriptures and prove all things. Peace and shalom. Baby.